this video, we're going to take a look at building database applications using DB Express, an additional set of components that we can use to access SQL databases, either locally or remotely on servers. So to do that, we'll say File New, FireMonkey C++ Desktop Application. And the first component we'll put down is a SQL Connection component. And the SQL Connection component is the starting component for connecting to a SQL database. In the Object Inspector, there are several properties. There's a connection name property. There's a driver name. Uh, as you saw in previous, there's a login prompt. Uh, and we have the connected property. Now, where DB Express gets the information about these connections and drivers is in two files that are over in your users public, public documents, Red Studio, DB Express 10.0 with XE3. There's two files, DBX drivers I and I. Let's take a look at that one. And here is information ab about each driver, which drivers are available. We have drivers for Interbase, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, SQLite, uh, Informix, uh, DB2, and so on. And you can add additional third-party drivers that are available from our technology partners. So this has lots of information in it about drivers, the, the vendor library, the 64-bit vendor library and the OS 10 vendor library, uh, in this case for Macintosh, the Dialib, for each of the different databases. And that information will be can be used inside of your application. The DBX Connections INI file has specific connection information about your databases. So, for example, down here under Interbase, uh, I might have a, a specific setting for my database. So, for example. Uh, with Interbase Express, yesterday I used the employee database, so here again I'll go to the Marketo Interbase employee database, and we can refer to each of these by their name uh, as the connection. We can also use the database explorer that's over here in the IDE, where we can choose the different types of databases. For example, if it's Interbase, then I can look at and modify uh, the information. So here I might uh, have a database. So let's see if that database is actually there. Put in the username and password, hit connection. And if the database exists, then it says uh, everything is okay and I can use that. We can create uh, all sorts of other connection strings and the information underneath for each of them. And you can also use the Data Explorer to look at uh, the tables that are in the database, uh, views, store procedures. Uh, you can look at all of that from the Data Explorer. So here in SQL Connection, I'll set the connection name to be that employee database. And it already knows that that's connected to Interbase, so it set the Interbase driver properly and, and other information about it, the username, password, and so on. Uh, also under parameters, uh, you'll get other information. For example, the, the SQL dialect, uh, other default values that are coming from the driver's INI and the connection's INI file. Since I already have the login information, I'll just connect. So the next step is to put a, a data set operation down. So I'll put a SQL query. Again, all these components are over here under the DB Express in the, op, in the component palette. SQL connection, a data set where you can do different commands, a SQL query, which takes SQL statements. Stored proc, execute a stored procedure. SQL table. The nice thing about DB Express is that it gives you one set of components and one interface to talk to multiple SQL databases. So I've got my query, so I need to hook that up to the, the SQL connection. So I'll use the object inspector and connect it. And then I can double click on the SQL property editor to get information. We can also bring that into the code editor, but I'll just say select star from employee. We can also right mouse click and bring up the fields editor. What the fields editor does, it lets you, it will interrogate the metadata of the columns in the table that are resultant from the SQL query. And it allows us to look at them and manipulate some properties of each of the fields if we want to, like the field name or the display name, uh, the width and things of that kind. Next, I'm gonna put down a T dataset provider. And the T dataset provider is going to talk through the SQL query. So we'll set its dataset property to T SQL query. And it's going to get the metadata and data from the SQL query, which is connected to the database. And it's going to provide it to something 
uh, in our application. What I'm going to use to uh, to hold the local copy of the data, remember the data is over in the SQL database, is I'm going to put down a tclient data set. And you saw that in a previous video where I used it, uh, the tclient data set with the local client data set file. In this case, I'm going to use the data and metadata coming from the remote database, in this case from Interbase Server. And so I'll have the client data set talk through a provider, and the provider I have is the data set provider. So now the client data set has uh, the data, so we can activate the client data set. The other thing client data set can do for you is it will cache any changes of data, and if you choose to, you can write the data by sending it back through the data set provider, and it will formulate SQL query update for any changes you make in the data locally and pass it along to the backend database. So this is the steps for providing uh, an updatable data set without having to write SQL update statements. The provider will uh, take care of that for us. And the client data set will cache the changes locally. We can even save changes locally temporarily. So if we have it, want to live in a connected and disconnected world to our database, maybe connect, pull the data down, save it locally, use your user interface, make changes to the data, save that changes locally. And then when you're connected back to the database, apply all the updates and they'll get sent back through the provider to the underlying database. At this point, we'll use the, the live bindings wizard. So what we want to do now is uh, link a grid to our client data set. So we'll have a string grid and we'll connect it to the client data set, not the original SQL query because we want to be able to do updates. Let's connect to the client data set and we'll add a data source navigator. Let's put the navigator at the top like we did before. And we'll add these other buttons now uh, that we actually use for doing the apply updates and the cancel updates. So apply updates will say any changes we make in the data set, in the client data set, we want to send those changes back through the data set provider to the underlying database. And let's align the grid to the, uh, to the rest of the client area. Now we've got a bunch of data on employees and we've got these uh, buttons down here. Everything is activated. Let's save it all uh, somewhere. Now we can run the application. Let's run it on uh, on Windows. And we can scroll around, we can go to the different rows, we can uh, see the other data that's there, uh, step through them. Maybe we want to change some of the data. So for example, this person's phone extension now is, uh, is something else. We can uh, apply that change back now. That change is inside the client data set. Uh, it hasn't been sent back to the database yet. Uh, we can make other changes, fix someone's name and so on. And then ultimately, when we want to apply the updates, meaning to send any changes that are cached in the data set back to the underlying database, we can call apply updates, which is this button here. The other one here is to cancel any updates. And then we come back in and rerun the application. Then uh, Chris has the new extension. Now, if we uh, make a change and save it locally, and we say cancel updates, if we come back and run it again, then no changes were made, even though we made that change locally in the client data set. So that's how easy it is to use DB Express using the information coming from the DBX drivers file and the DBX connections INI file. And also then using the data set provider and the client data set to provide the ability to have an updatable data set. Let's do one more thing just to write a line of code. Let me align this to none. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a button up here. Just to show you a line of code, I'm going to make that property be apply updates. And then I'll double click on that to bring up the event handler for clicking on the button. And I'll simply say client data set one, and we're going to call the apply updates. And the parameter for apply updates is the maximum number of errors. So when I tell the client data set to take any cached updates that are in the client data set and send them through the provider to the underlying database, uh, I might get some errors. Maybe I made a change to a field. Somebody else changed the same field on the same row uh, in the database. And so you'll get a, a reconciliation error, some kind of error. And you can tell the apply updates what to do, how many errors to accept uh, until you stop and go and figure out. You can also, there's an on reconciliation error event handler that you can use to, to provide some user input. For example, to say, hey, there's this update error. Or there's a, somebody deleted the row and you trying to update it and it's no longer there. The changes in the client data set will help validate that the original data that you made changes to is still there in the database. And if not, that's some kind of update error. Uh, if I put minus one, 
that just says don't worry about uh, any errors so let's uh, let's run this application and so now we can again before we use the apply updates here and cancel updates notice they're grayed out right now because I haven't made any changes but as soon as I go in and make a change and save it back to the local client data set these are enabled but I can also call apply updates and now notice they get grayed out again because the client data set updates have, have been taken care of so that's how you can write code to do apply updates when needed uh, maybe your user interface isn't going to have a navigator you've got to key in some data to do a lookup of a database row uh, so you need a user interface and some code to do the updating of the cached updates in the client data set so apply updates is the method you would use and that's how to quickly build a SQL database application that where you can do updates of the data and send those updates back through uh, the provider uh, into the underlying database without having to write SQL update statements.